Vincent's next film was another based on a stage play, The Eve of St. Mark in 1944. The film begins with a young soldier named Private Quiz West, played by William Ith, home on leave. He has brought home his girlfriend, Janet, played by Ann Baxter, to meet his parents, played by Ruth Nelson and Ray Collins. While there, he proposes to her, and she accepts. I guess I was too young to understand what that feeling meant. I do now, though. Will you share it with me, Janet? I'd love to. Back at the Army base, we're introduced to Quiz's platoon, a filled artillery battalion full of quirky characters, including Vincent Price as Private Francis Marion, a southern aristocrat with a penchant for spouting poetry. A thing of sea or land. Female of the sex, it seems, that so bedecked or nate and gay comes this way sailing, with all her bravery on and tackle trim, sails filled and streamers waving, courted by all the winds that hold them play, an amber scent of odorous perfume, a harbinger. Oh, that's beautiful. Vincent talks throughout the film in a not-so-convincing southern accent. And believe me, I know southern accents. At times, he pulls it off okay, at others, not so much. Yes, but then another question arises. How close do I have to come to being horizontal before I earn the right to remain perpendicular? I don't know that either. No, I suppose nobody knows that, or we've been told by this time. I know one thing. I read through the entire soldier's handbook again last night, and it's not in there. No, I looked for it there. I shall look for it tonight at the bottom of a Coke with rum. Hey, there's our bus. Come on. The troop gets word that they're to be redeployed to San Francisco. Quiz gets a 48-hour pass and visits home briefly to say his goodbyes to Janet and his parents. Will you wait for me, Janet? You know I will. The reunion doesn't last long, however, as he is deployed to combat right away and stationed on a small island in the Pacific. The remainder of the movie cuts back and forth between Quiz and his regiment trying to hold the island from the Japanese and his loved ones back home, waiting and worrying if he's alright. On the island, the soldiers are hit with a vicious bout of malaria, and several men are knocked out of commission, including Private Marion. Vincent had previously worked with the star of this picture, William Ith, in The Song of Bernadette. Like Bernadette, this film also has religious overtones, the title referring to a Catholic holiday. So this is the eve of St. Mark. Hey, what is with that St. Mark there? It's an old legend. On St. Mark's Eve, if a maiden stands in the door of a church, she will see inside the church all those who are going to die that year. Yes, gentlemen, I, I'm afraid, but Peter qualifies. Well, I'm glad to say in a church, that's all. Church is any place a group of people worship God. I'm sure, during the past few weeks, we've all said a prayer or two in here. This film was directed by John Stahl, who Vincent would go on to work with in two more pictures, Lever to Heaven and The Keys of the Kingdom. The film's stage play roots are easily recognized, with much of the film taking place in long chunks in a single location, most notably the cave where the troop holds up from Japanese bombers. Also appearing in this film is Harry Morgan, best known later for his roles in Dragnet and MASH. He plays Private Shevlin, one of Vincent's fellow soldiers. They would appear together later in the 1946 classic Dragonwick. This film is a morale booster, pretty typical in its time, made to encourage the folks back home that their loved ones are fighting the good fight and all isn't hopeless. After their last shell was expended and their gun destroyed by enemy fire, you may expect to hear from him in time. He's alive. Overall, The Eve of St. Mark is a pretty enjoyable picture. The action scenes are well done, though too few in coming. 
The film does tend to be a bit talky in places and a little bit sappy, but overall, it's worth watching. Next up for Vincent would be the 1944 film noir classic and one of his very best films, Laura. What is death to him who meets it with an upright heart? A quiet haven where his shattered bark harbors secure till the rough storm is past. Perhaps a passage... How do you like that? Poetry in a time like this. Melissa, would you accept anything less than the taste of fresh, cold milk? <laughs> of course not. Or would you settle for butter or cheese that wasn't made from fresh, wholesome milk? <laughs> Never. So, of course, we always look for the real seal or check the ingredients. That's how we know milk or any dairy food is real. Right, Melissa? Right. Mm -hmm. We're so clever. We are. <laughs> you know it's real when you see the real seal. 